What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. It's Decipher and I'm glad to see you. Glad you guys are here. We're going to do something very special today. This is a little different than the sound design lessons we've been doing. This is all about different ways to keep your creativity at a flow. Uh, how to keep from getting beat block, writer's block, creative block, whatever you want to call it, whatever your, your industry is that it calls for. If you're a songwriter, you might get writer's block. If you're a producer like I am, you probably have gotten beat block at some point in your life. So I'm going to show you guys a few ways to uh, kind of help to get through those things. We're going to talk about some of them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys. So the first thing I want to talk to you about to keep your creativity up is keep instruments around that you're unfamiliar with. You'd be amazed, like... This thing right here, my keyboard, is honestly one of the, the instruments that I keep around the most that I am so unfamiliar with. I don't play piano. I'm not a keyboard player by any means. So this is totally foreign to me. But I still can keep the creativity up by simply just finding a few notes to play in, in the scale. If I can find a couple of notes, usually, like, say, if I'm in a... A G sharp, well, I know that like a G sharp and a C sharp are going to be natural scales from, or natural notes from my years of playing guitar and scales. So I can start to work from there and find new ways to move around. So don't be afraid to keep instruments around you're unfamiliar with. It will definitely keep your, your creativity at a maximum. Um, it'll keep you kind of guessing. It'll keep the, uh, the magic in making music up too, so... Um, one of the next things is, is, and I tell everybody this, like, especially the producers that I know, because I know a lot of producers who are like, I got a guitar laying around, but I don't know how to play it. Open tune it. I mean, like, I keep a guitar around that I open tune. I keep several guitars around that are open tuned, actually, um, for several different reasons. Like... I'm going to shift you guys a little bit here. And I'm going to slide out some. Like this one, I keep in an open E. So that, like, I can do covers on this, like, uh... Type stuff, um... The great thing about a lot of open tunings is, is that even if you're not a guitar player, you can use one finger a lot of times to just play stuff. Um, one finger chords. Type stuff. So, open tune guitars, definitely a big plus whether you're a guitar player or not. I mean, you can go to pretty much any pawn shop, pick up a cheap ass guitar for like less than a hundred bucks, learn how to open tune that thing to an open D, G, or E. You're good to go, man. You've got new ideas all over the place that you can play with. Um, and that kind of segues to our next one, which is don't be afraid to play. Do not, uh, do not be afraid to play. Like, play is what keeps us creative. Um, if you're a songwriter, I definitely would suggest that one of your biggest forms of play, learn as many songs as you can. Really do. Learn as many songs as you can. Um, if you're a beat maker, just play. Get in the studio and just play. Open stuff that you've never used and play with it, see what it does. I mean, that's how, like, I learned to use Patcher so well, was I literally just got in the studio and started playing with it. And I found all these things that I really liked. Um, I want to double back for a second and talk about the instruments that you're not familiar with keeping around as well. Because there is one other one in here that I'm not super familiar with. Even though I play guitar and stuff. And that's this. My ukulele. Which is actually, believe it or not, open tuned right now. Um... Use a Bic lighter as a slide here. Of 
course, big lighters don't work so well on this. Uh, let's see if I have an actual slide here. Just neat little ideas that you can always come up with. I mean, like that, like, I'm not a ukulele player. But again, this is open tuned. This is uh, what I've created as a ukulele form of ostrich tuning where everything is tuned to E. So, just keep stuff around that you can play with. I mean, I've got maracas, djembes, cahoons, bongos, all kinds of stuff around here that most of it I don't even know how to play. Um, it's just there because I picked it up in odd places. Like, look, I've got, as I knock a bunch of shit off, sleigh bells. Why? Because I found them at Christmas time for a dollar. So I got them. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to play. Play is a good thing. Never gonna, you're never gonna be in trouble for playing. It's not like... I mean, we're music producers, we're musicians, we're creatives, so it's not like somebody's going to come in and be like, what are you doing? Why are you playing? Wh what? No. I've never had that happen. Somebody walks in and goes, what are you doing? I'm playing around. Oh, cool. That's about how they look at it. Um, another part of this, while we're on the play subject, is, and while we're kind of on the subject of things that don't necessarily look like the creative process, this is something I learned from St. Vincent. I recently took her master class and I learned a lot from this. And this was one thing that I really liked that I carried with me. Sometimes the creative process looks like taking an unneeded shower. Staring at a wall for 20 minutes. I mean, I don't do a ton of live streaming just yet. I'm getting ready to start doing live streaming here on YouTube and stuff. But you guys will see that a lot of times the creative process for me can be flourishes of 20 minutes at the keys and then 15 minutes of me sitting here going. As I look at the Madonna picture on the wall or whatever it is, it just, you know, sometimes the creative process is just these odd things that people don't necessarily connect to it. Sometimes it's a nap. I mean, I've, literally walked away from songs and stuff before, like, I'm going to take a nap. And that's all it was. And then I came back with a whole new concept and a new idea. The thing is, is that when you take your brain... Okay, so when you come in the studio, your brain immediately jumps into, like, this creative mode. But it's constantly fighting between the creative and the scientist. You know, your left and your right side are constantly fighting. So, sometimes those breaks is when you get to step out, turn the entire thing off, let it all just fade out back to your brain, just being a brain again, running the body like it does. And you could be standing in the shower and go, that's the melody line I need for that song. Or, that's how that chorus should go. You'll just have these thoughts that'll hit you once the brain's done fighting with itself. So try and turn that inner critic off as much as you can. I know it's difficult. So if you have to take a minute to step away to turn it off, that's fine. There's no, there's no set rules here. We get to create as we see fit. Um, especially for a lot of us who are independent, we really get to just create when we want to create, how we want to create and whatever we want to create. So that's kind of the nice thing about that. So don't be afraid to take time and just don't be one of those people, you can't work all the time, okay? You cannot work all the time. So don't be one of those people who works themselves to death and fries their brain out by the time they make it to stardom or by the time they get their notice or whatever it may be that you're striving for. You don't want to be so burned out that you hate the thing you're doing by the time you get there. So that's one. Um, moving on, let me move through my notes a little bit here. Another way you can you can always, always be any creative block, collaborate. There's always new up-and-coming artists, producers, musicians, whatever it is that you're in that are looking for people to work with to help them with 
their blocks or the things that they don't understand or even just to help them grow and get noticed a little bit. Use that to your advantage. If you're stuck, find somebody that needs the help and use that to your advantage. You guys have seen I've got a whole season of collabs that I've been doing since the start of the year. And the reason for that is, is because every time I hit a block, I hit somebody up and go, want to do a collab? I'm stuck. Here's a loop or here's a drum loop. Put something on it. I got nothing for this. If I'm writing songs, I'll go and find somebody and be like, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Look at this. What do I do? Collaborate. There's a reason we collaborate. You know, the purpose of collaboration is to embrace the sonic growth of music or creativeness and art in any form and bring in ideas that you couldn't or wouldn't have thought of yourself. So, that's just a sidebar on collaboration and why it's so important. Um... These next ones I really, really want to take a second and talk about because they're huge, especially for the musicians out there, okay? People who... Like, people who paint, you guys already know about this. You guys already... That's a whole different kind of art. You guys already understand what I'm about to say. So, if you're a painter and you're watching this, just know you probably already know this. But I'm going to use it in the musical sense here. Don't be afraid to record things to tape. That simple. I know it sounds like the most simple thing in the world. Especially to people who are probably like, Well, I'm not a music producer, I'm a songwriter. Don't we record everything to tape? Yes, in that sense we do. But what I mean here is, let's say that I grab this guitar right here. And let's say that I threw the microphone up here down and I had my, you know, my uh, CLA Waves Reverb plug-in, my Arteria Chorus loaded up, all these really cool old-school 80s effects. And I start playing and I'm going... Which sounds really cool on its own, but if it's coming through my headphones sounding even cooler because of all the reverb and the chorus and everything and the delays, I'll record it all to tape. And that's technically like the big no-no is that you're not supposed to put things down that you can't undo. If I like it, it goes to tape. And that's, that's a... That's a lesson that I learned from probably one of the biggest songs in the world, which is uh, the song Heroes by Bowie. I mean, literally, if you listen if you listen to the song Heroes by Bowie, which there's a video by Tony Visconti. I can't use it, unfortunately, because YouTube claims and all that. But if you guys go search at Tony Visconti on Heroes, he'll break down the process and show you track by track what they did. And on the bass track where Tony's playing bass... There's, let me see if I can do this here. So like, if Tony's playing bass and it's like a... Type of a deal. They had put a phaser on it because phasers were pretty new at the time, which makes it do like this... Kind of a waving sound. It, it phases everything back and forth on it. Um, trying to explain for people who aren't music producers. Who don't understand what phasers are. They put a phaser on the bass. Well, that was like a huge rule breaker back then. It was like, no, 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 no. You don't record effects on bass. You don't record them to tape especially. And it's still a thing. I see producers all the time like, oh, you don't put effects down until afterwards. You don't use auto-tune until after you record so that you can tune the vocals. What? Bro, if I got a singer that comes in and they're bad, I'm auto-tuning while we record. I am not listening to you be bad. I'm gonna listen to you good. The way that it should sound in the mix. The way that it'll sound when it's done. 
So record with effects if you like it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't, you know... This kind of, this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to segue right to the next point here. Take all these lessons that you learn, all these things that people say. Never stop learning. Don't be afraid to learn. Learning is key. Knowledge is always power. But don't take everything as a golden rule. I mean, like, here's a prime example. Just because Bowie and Tony Visconti used a phaser on their bass doesn't mean I'm running out putting phasers on my bass. Doesn't mean I'm running out and phasing 808s out of tune and shit or out of key. Not happening. They liked it. It worked. If I find something, maybe I put a reverb on an 808 and I like it. It works. I'm keeping it. It's going to be that way. That's the way it's going to sound. So don't be afraid to learn. Keep learning. Always keep learning. But don't take everything as a golden rule. Sometimes things work only for the person that does them because they know how to do it. So you might have to adapt it to yourself. And this kind of runs on to the next thing that I want to talk about here, which is study from the legends. You know, the more you can learn from the people who did this before you, the people who inspired you to do this, the better you're going to be. Like, I always loved how Bowie was kind of this chameleon. He could change characters all the time. He was Ziggy, then he was Aladdin Sane, then he was Halloween Jack, then he was the Thin White Duke, then he was, you know, Bowie. At one point, he was just Bowie in the 80s doing Let's Dance and stuff with his blonde hair and his blazers. So he always had these evolving characters, the Earthling, all these different things. And I really loved that. That inspired me to get into music because I love Bowie. I loved his music. I loved the whole aspect of characters and things. And then as I did some research on Bowie, I found that Bowie was a huge William Burroughs fan. So I started researching William Burroughs. Well, William Burroughs has this intricate little writing style that he used to use where he'd take index cards, and Bowie wrote the same way, and I've done it too. You take index cards, and you write sentences across them, and chop them up. And then you throw them down on a table in little strips, and you mix them about, and you just start to place sentences together till you start forming things that work. Um, Like, there's a, a Bowie song called Cracked Actor where he talks about you sold your illusion for a bag full of shacks well, you made a bad connection because I just want your sex. That's how that was written. It was just some sentences he'd written down and mixed them together and made that verse out of. And I found that really intriguing. Well, then as I did a little more research, I found that William Burroughs had other inspirations that had taught him these tricks. He had all these different things. So, like, the more you learn about a legend that you were inspired by, the more you're going to learn about their legends that inspired them, and that gives you new creative ways to come into this and make music. Um, now, that pretty much sums all that up. As far as the learning and not taking things for a golden rule, per se. We're going to move into the next section now, which is kind of more about you, your mental health, and your mental state, which is, first off, never give up. I mean, the second that, like, if you're sitting here writing a song, and you go, oh, I can't do this, I give up. As soon as you say those words, your brain goes, okay, we're done then. You gave up. We're not coming back to this. We're not thinking about this. You gave up. Never give up. You can take days off. You can walk away. Don't use the words, I give up. I quit. Don't do that. Because that tells your brain that you're done with it. You don't want to do it anymore. So your brain goes, okay, let's move on. So stay away from those words. Um, and in the same aspect, again, if you feel you need a day off, Take it. If you need a month off, take it. 
In the immortal words of John Lennon, life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Sometimes you just have to take days and let life happen. Nothing wrong with that. We're all human. We all have bad days. We all have good days. We all have days where we're a little bit broken. It is what it is. You accept it and you move on. You take your day. You take a few days. I took this weekend off for the same exact reason. There was no YouTube posts, no Instagrams, no nothing. I took a couple of days off just because I needed to clear my head. I sat around, I watched some TV, I played guitar just for fun. I meditated, you know, just all these little things that I wanted to do just to reset my own mental state. There's nothing wrong with that. And then this last one is the absolute most important thing I can tell you guys and this has to do with you as a creative and your mental state together you cannot stay in your comfort zone forever you can't it's that simple um think about if Elvis had stayed in his comfort zone forever we wouldn't have songs like Hound Dog or I, you know, I Can't Help Falling in Love. It's just numerous, numerous songs, Jailhouse, Rock, I mean, all these things. He would have stayed in gospel music. If he'd stayed right in his comfort zone, he would have stayed in gospel music all of his life. He'd have been singing How High is the Mountain and all that stuff, you know. Um, if Prince had stayed in his comfort zone, He'd still be singing soul, gospel stuff too, you know. Had Prince not pushed out of that comfort zone and went, I'm going to make a new sound, he would have still been just another gospel singer, R&B type singer. Had Bowie not pushed his comfort zone, he'd still be doing, well... Fortunately, it would have been a lot of that laughing gnome folky crap. If you've ever heard Bowie's first album, it was not great. So, push the comfort zone. You gotta leave the comfort zone. There is a reason that the comfort zone makes you feel comfortable. It's because it's easy. And the second you step out of that comfort zone, just a little bit, you're gonna get hit by all these new ideas. See, the comfort zone, I like to think of the comfort zone like, a box like the comfort zone is this big wall that's around you on all four sides and it keeps other thoughts from penetrating it keeps you right there in your happy little space where you're like oh everything's safe i'm good here i'm good i don't need anything else why do i want to do anything else when i'm comfortable why do you want to be comfortable all your life don't you want to experience things and learn and grow and become a better person and become a different person and do all these different things? I know that I do. So I like I like scaling the wall and climbing out of the comfort zone. I mean, at this point, I'm so far from the comfort zone that I don't even think I could find my way back to it if I tried. Ah, uh, And actually, I heard a quote last night. I was watching American Idol on Hulu. And Lionel Richie made this quote where he says... Life begins when you leave your comfort zone. And that really hit me. you got to leave the comfort zone. You've got to be willing to take those chances and take those risks and step out of the comfort zone from time to time. If you spend all your life in the comfort zone, you'll only end up with regrets. Um... So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, I just wanted to talk about some ways to keep the creativity flowing, things like that. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this video off by saying one more time, life begins when you leave your comfort zone. All right, guys, I'm Decipher. This has been great. I will see you tomorrow. I don't know what we're doing tomorrow. <laughs> Probably sound design lessons, though. So... If you guys found this helpful, enjoyable in any way, shape, or form, please drop a like, 
subscribe, do all that stuff, drop a comment, let me know what you guys thought about this video, if it helped, if there was anything you learned in here, anything you hadn't thought about before, let me know. I always like to hear from you guys, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Just remember, life begins when you leave your comfort zone. Alright guys, it's Decipher. I'll see you tomorrow.